We are joined at the Media Center here at the Strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, our four wide Vegas Nationals. Funny car winner, Ron Caps, the 69th win of his career, but first as a team owner, first of the season. Sixth in Vegas time, John Forrest, for most in Funny Car, now has won four wide in Charlotte and in Vegas. All right, team owner Caps, walk us through your race day. How'd your driver do? Driver? I'm like, oh, you're not on. But now you are. Yeah, driver uh, just trying not to make mistakes. We uh, first lap, it was on a heck of a run, and it quit. And uh, we thought it ran out of fuel. There was there was a little problem. Uh, one of the cars had getting ready to stage, and a lot of us sat there. And I thought, oh man, if this runs out of fuel, it's going to destroy some stuff. But it, it it was going faster than our 88 we qualified with Joe, and it just uh, went down there and quit. So we knew the numbers were there. We knew the track was there. Um, second round to go up there and throw down with such a packed. Well, really, every quad was nuts. I mean, you qualify number one, you get Tim Wilkerson and J.R. Todd in your quad. That's crazy. And then they have Hagen and, uh, you know, um, J.R. in the second. Uh, Robert, I mean, just you looked across the board and you're like, oh, my gosh, it's uh, murder's row in all of them. So Guido, one great thing, and I love racing with Guido, is that he will not go up there just to run okay or just to get down the track. Like, he drags a wheelbarrow up there and he wants to go down especially against Jimmy Proc and guys like that it's really a feather in the cap for crew chief to, uh, to throw those kind of big numbers out and I'll be honest I, I was more I was worried about obviously Hagen and, and Dickey but Robert put uh, 86 in the semis there and uh, that was pretty stout but our car was running right with it in the round I told you in first round so we knew we had it but just great parts that chassis you know built a DSR by the boys there, um, and just having that kind of that that arsenal of, of minds with Madeline and uh, our Nap Auto Care guys, just to go up there and not even bat an eye and say, "Let's go throw toe to toe with these guys and throw down." So to answer your question, the driver was trying not to make the mistake and be the weak link <laughs> every run. And I didn't know what my light was, and it didn't matter. I honestly thought a blinking light was second. So when my guardrail light was blinking, I thought, "Oh man, I go second's all right, runner up's okay." And then Madeline came on, it sounded like he was crying, and he was saying, we did it, we did it. And so, that's how I found out. You had a 53 in the final round. So let's open it up to members of media with questions for Ron Caps, winning from the number one qualifying <laughs> position, Phil Burgess, NHRA National Dragster. So, obviously, first win as team owner. You had a good team already for last year, obviously, it was one championship, but did you think a first one would come for the team this early, or is this beyond your I was thinking, you know, you don't expect it. I mean, I always sound cocky again to think, yeah, we're going to have one off. This is funny car. We went through this all last year. How tough was funny car last year? Yeah. The toughest in my career since 97, I thought. The tightest field. And we're seeing it even more so this year. So um, you, you hope and you know that we have everything we need. I mean, obviously, we have a great sponsor, Napa and Gear Wrench and all the, the things that we need that way. We brought some really cool small sponsors on with CHE Precision and Dark and Sleeves and um, really, we had everything we needed. You just don't know, right? And then Pomona, we go to the final, and I thought, this is too good. And number one qualifier. So you're thinking, it's almost too good to be true. So, no, Phil, I didn't, I knew we'd have to earn it. I didn't think it would come at a four wide, especially going in that final round to look over and see Robert and Hyatt and Alexis. Um, so, um, you know, but again, I, I just love everything about how we're, we're building this team and how Guido's been so great about helping me with things besides him being a crew chief um, and, and it's allowed Medlin to do his thing which is just concoct these great ideas of things we need to try and do and um, you know that uh, it, it's crazy I got a text from Don Perdome yesterday after the run um, you know those are special moments when, when people like that send you a text congratulating you on, on running well and um, I didn't so to answer your question I didn't I didn't think it'd come as quick honestly Next question for Cap's name and affiliation. Uh, sorry, thank you. Uh, Crystal Clay of RacingRefresh.com. We spoke earlier about having your family here, but now that it's actually materialized and your family is up in the grand. Did you see him up there? Oh, my God. <laughs> I was back here, but tell me how that went. Uh, I hope they those, those seats out in front of the suites are very strong because there was literally like 80 people out there. And I was waving them, come up through turn road like we do every run, hit the winter circle. And all you're going to have to do here in a little while is come out in the winter circle and you'll see. It's been unbelievable. Palmer Electric, who's huge in what this track got built with the NASCAR track and everything here, has been part of our family since I drove for Don Perdome. And they've been 
uh, you know, so supportive of us. So this trophy, I said in the interview, we're going to give it to Tony and Gail Wilson, who are Napa owners. They own a lot of stores in Oregon, fantastic people. He's been fighting throat cancer and he can't even eat. And he wanted to be here for this race. So um, they were at my first banquet that we finished eighth or something. Um, and they were at the banquet when I finally won a championship and they keep coming and supporting us. And so that trophy, as special as it is, and I could cut it in a million pieces and send it to Napa headquarters and all these jobbers and all these Napa auto cares. Um, it's going to go to them. Um, we can buy more, but um, God, my wife and just the whole family is supportive as they have been in this journey. And it's just going to get better. Um, I just can't even, I can't even, it hasn't even sunk in yet. I mean, I can't even believe that I'm standing here as an NHRA owner holding a Wally at a four wide race. It's just, uh, it's beyond comprehension for me right now. Well, that's where I was going to go with that is when this does sink in in the next day or two or whatever it is, is this going to feel different because of the, the, the status as a team owner now? Is this victory going to feel different than, than the other ones? Yeah, uh, yeah I, God, I don't know. I would assume I, I was speechless. I, I could, you know, it was like my first win yeah. going back to when we won Pomona. I think with Don Perron was my first win and I never in a million years thought I'd ever own a Wally. Um, I still can't believe it. And like I said in the interview, I mean, dreams are, they're still there. You know, here I am, you know, in my 50s and living a, a lifelong dream. You know, Phil and I have talked about it. I grew up in a sport, like literally grew up in a sport, was conceived in a drag strip. Um, so every bit of my being has been part of drag racing, whether it's NHRA or bracket racing on weekends. And so my mom and dad to, to you know, to grow up every week and go into a drag race, especially Famoso and Fremont back in the day and come to Lions when I was a kid and places like that you only read about. Uh, pretty cool childhood. And so never in a million years back then to be standing at it and you know, watching Snake and Mongoose and Jungle and Beetle and you know just all the hitters and thinking fast forward someday time machine that I'd be holding one of those as an owner is nuts. It's, um, God, I can't even... It's crazy. <laughs> Chris Bishop, Racing Pro Media. Ron, this is the first Wally as an owner. You're paying for the celebration. How's it going to be different? But <laughs> oh. well, we had flights out to get my daughter back to school, and I saw that it was delayed in Southwest. Um, it's now saying 12.35 a.m., so we, uh, I hope they let us on the flight because we're going to burn this place down tonight. It's, it's going to be fun. We have so many people here that came over from all over. It's just uh, it's going to be a fun celebration to finally do it here. And I told her that this has become my home track, and I live closest to Pomona, and it really is a home track, but this is just my brother lives here, you know, his family, and we make it a big, we make it a, almost like a family event or vacation, but it's around my drag race every year. So um, I just try to stay focused through the weekend, but to be able to win and have that many family there is rare to be able to do that. You know, you always hope you could, but to be able to walk out of here and go in that winter circle and just take pictures with all these family members, some that have never been, um, some that have been here every time we've been here and never been in a winter circle and supported us, those are those moments where you get to finally go do that and it's gonna be cool, but you know, Allie, um, Cassandra, you know, Paul Mecca, our team manager, there's so many people, Antron Brown, I keep saying it, but I can't instill enough that uh, how much help he's been to me in the off season. Um, drag racing's in a good place right now. We got a lot of really good, I won't say young, cause we're not all young, but um, a lot of really cool teams, you know, not underdogs, but a lot of fresh stuff going on right now. And it's not just the big four and there's, you know, eight car teams. Um, and I think we're in a good spot right now, I really do. So, I mean, got to get tech messages from Boyer and F1 guys, and just, it's it's cool to know that our sport's this growing this much and they're all watching. Congratulations. Thanks. Tom Zaleski, I'm kind of today. Ron, how hard is the balance between owner and driver right now? You're rolling, not, not very far in, but is, is it getting any easier to, to, to take everything into account when you're trying, when you're getting ready to race especially? Uh, it was in Phoenix. I got beat on a whole shot pretty bad by force, and I guarantee it was, it was just my mind racing on other stuff, business stuff. So as much as you could say it doesn't, I knew there was going to be a time, and, and I thought I did pretty well last year knowing everything that was going on through the countdown and still win a championship with all the clutter going on to be in trying to start a new team the next year. 
I thought it'd be okay, but I made a mistake in Phoenix and I attributed that to too much going on. So uh, everybody around me kind of helped that from then on. In Gainesville, we should have won the race. Um, but here, you know, rolling up there, I just, again, like you said, I just didn't want to make that mistake. And so I'm trying to focus everything out and just, it sounds so easy. And I don't even know how, you know, you tell your crews and you hear all those guys talk about it and there's no way you can physically just say, okay, get that out of my brain. Cause, you know, we were rolling up here and I was thinking about an invoice that I thought I sent out on Friday. <laughs> and and I'm like, get that out of your head, you know, it's just, uh, so it's always there. So I, I don't even know how to answer that yet. Maybe the end of the year, I can tell you, but um, I know I've aged probably a few years, just in a couple months. And I've had people talk me off the cliff and Drew Nat Antron in January. And I, he said, look, brother, we're gonna be about June and we're gonna look back and laugh at these moments that you're so afraid of what's going on and wondered if you can do it. And he's right. I mean, I, I never thought I'd be standing here. And um, so all the people have helped me, but uh, it means a lot. Any additional questions for Ron? <clears throat> you know, you mentioned how much Antron's helped you, but to beat him to the winner's circle, I mean, oh, good yeah. going on. <laughs> oh, I didn't think about that. Thanks, Phil. No, that's bad juju. I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> on that note, you know, Hagen with a big win for, for Tony last week, Robert winning the first two. You said it was like a murderer's row. Looking at the final round, certainly was. And uh, to be able to get on the board, keep up, right? Some might have thought that as a team owner, there would be a little organizing and you wouldn't be uh, initially fighting for a championship with the best of the best right away. You are. What, what about that statement that, hey, we're, we're here not just to have a team, we're here to compete and win championships? Well, it's validation that I we did what we did. We stayed and we leased the equipment from DSR, the same stuff we won the championship. Great equipment, great cars built at DSR, all the stuff that, that uh, those people, and all, it, it amounts to people. I've said this many times, but all the people that I've been with the last 17 years at DSR, we still have that. So Tony's sort of my teammate, Tony Schumacher. We share the hospitality. And he came over, we bumped fists and talked a little bit just like the old days. And so it's it's validation that we made the right move this year and did what we did and continued on. And that was a big part of Guido and of course everybody at DSR. So um, yeah, I, you know, we have big plans and I, I, it's gonna be something like, like a little kid. Um, here in a couple of few weeks, we're gonna have a great announcement and it's just gonna take this whole thing to another level for me. And I can't wait to, uh, to, to get there, but to be able to do this right now and then know that we're gonna do that is so much more exciting now. Um, and again, I think that was stuff that was cluttering in my brain, so I can't wait till uh, we can get that out. And uh, it's another great thing for the sport of drag racing. and um, Just people, great people. And on that note, look ahead. We got Houston, we got Four White and Charlotte, and the season just keeps building uh, with all these great stories. Uh, what lies ahead uh, for the fans of NHRA drag racing, do you think? I mean, you look around, you look at the, the teams at Blake Alexander running great, Jason Rupert getting in there, Gary Dencham running great run, even though he didn't make it Sunday, but these, these teams that I used to cheer for as a kid, you know, it was Joe Amato, you know, would roll the starting line and it'd be Diamond Dave and his short little dragster, and guess who I was cheering for, and that was me. So I love the underdogs. We may not be the underdog now, but um, I think it's great for the sport to have, you know, all these... Uh, these up and coming teams and these teams that may not have the budgets and the, the big names, but uh, again, we've got a great TV package and the sport I think is in a really, really good place right now. 69 career wins for Ron Caps, but the first as an owner. You think Ronnie Munn's not here, huh? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Ron, go celebrate. Thank you very much. Thanks, man.